exported it actually before I forgot. And coming back here, share screen. All right. All right, so kind of a recap what we talked about last time, right? So we're talking about requirement analysis. And I told you, I would just tell you this is really, really simple rules we use in practice rather than formal tools and methodologies people discovering in research area. Those are still useful, um, but um, in reality, people tend to do a kind of more um, a, a concise and simpler way uh, for people to try things quickly, right? Uh, so I spent some time to talk about different companies, there's some good examples and then bad examples, right? But you can see some of this big company, they made the same mistake all the time and they try to be very technical, they try to be very special, they wanted to do some innovation, which, which they did, um, but that doesn't really mean that you can sell it, okay? And also I particularly talk more about Amazon since I know this company really well. And um, internally, they're really following the rules of, you know, this thing called a customer uh, centric or customer uh, obsession. And then um, some of this product, they made a lot of this kind of things that purely based on a customer's um, um, request without pre, uh, prioritizing the revenue or profit first. Okay. I also mentioned their really good culture about like how do you treat your competitors? Okay, they, they still compete with you. Obviously, nobody wants to lose the competition, but the way they win the competition is by working even harder with their customers rather than to competing directly on the products, services uh, provided by your competitors. Right, so I was just brought in some of the news um, this morning. So it looks like uh, Jeff Bezos is the, uh, you know, worth than $200 billion. And looks like this is the first guy ever that um, uh, get to this point, okay? Basically much more than Bill Gates and uh, Warren Buffett. So, so obviously he's the number one richest man in the world right now. And um, again, this is I think a really big accomplishment because um, there are some differences between Amazon and Google, Microsoft, and you know, also of course Warren Buffett. You know, the Amazon is always operating on this very, very low margin. Okay, so their stuff very cheap. Um, they, uh, they, they, they try to give the customers a better price, um, but their cost is actually really high. And they compare, I want you to think about Amazon and Google, right? They both are giant companies. However, I think Amazon employees should be much more than Google because they have warehouses, they have logistics, they have a lot more employees in the non-technical side. But Google, they're purely just software engineers. Um, so they're, um, but because of that, dealing with all this stuff, and think about right now, if you have a Prime membership, you buy something on Amazon, it really doesn't cost you too much, right? And beside the price itself, it's also not too expensive because the whole platform, you know, just make all the seller to be very competitive in, in price. So that means every time you buy something, uh, they only make a very small, Amount of money, so that's why every time you look at Amazon's uh, financial report every quarter, their margin uh, is really, really low. Sometimes when I was in the company, sometimes it's like one percent, two percent, that kind of uh, uh, range. Sometimes they lose a little bit; they, they will lose, you know, three percent, five percent in certain quarters. As you're always on this edge, but if you look at Google or if you look at Facebook, right, their margin is, is much higher much higher, okay, because they, uh, their business model is also good, you know, for Google, if you're familiar with their business model, they mix all the money by uh, ads, and all the ads you click through Google searches, click through the YouTube videos, click anywhere. So all this click are so expensive. Sometimes one click, all right, it costs the, the company, for example, $2, $3, just by one click, okay, not to mention whether you buy it or not. But think about for the for Google to maintain that one click to make that through two or three dollars, um, nothing. Basically, they have their web services that are up and running. You click on that, and then Google makes money. But for Amazon, if you buy three dollar stuff, okay, you buy it, and then they have people to actually package your thing and send it out through UPS and all of this. And at the end, you actually return the, the product. So 
it's, it, you know, from the business model point of view, obviously Google is much better. And then they, they make tons of money. That's why Google benefits everything is good. However, so Amazon is really good at operating at this lower margin, but larger volume. Um, and also because they're not too sensitive about you know, the profit and making money for the short term, that's why they really gains and grows long term. You know, a lot of people, you know, you, you listen to the talks, the CEOs, entrepreneurs, they talk about, oh, we like, we, we focus on customer, we want to focus on long term growth. You know, this is the thing that is easier said than done. Okay, you can say you want to do long term, of course, everyone long term growth. However, can you really sacrifice the, the, the short term um, loses and benefits? Um, that's actually a major question. So that's why Amazon is really uh, good at this kind of a culture. And then they are uh, pretty serious about everything. Okay. So I actually did find out this little uh, uh, interview. Uh, Jeff Bezos said, I don't know when, but uh, they talk about this uh, competition. Let me actually replace this one. Um, one thing that has made us successful by far is obsessive compulsive focus on the customer as opposed to obsession over the competitor and I talk so often to um, other CEOs and uh, some other CEOs and also founders and entrepreneurs and I can tell that even though they're talking about customers they're really focusing on competitors and it is a huge advantage to any company if you can stay focused on your customer instead of your competitor so then you have to identify who is your customer um, so at the Washington Post for example is the customer the people who buy advertisements from us? No, the customer is the reader, full stop. The customer is the reader. And then, by the way, where do advertisers want to be? Advertisers want to be where there are readers. So it's really not that complicated. You know, it sort of, it comes around really well. Um, but the number one thing that- Yep, so that's kind of, a, you, can, you can take a look at more about this one. I didn't hear this one from Jeff Bezos. I, I heard that one from AWS had Andy Jersey, who's really successful right now. Um, yeah, that, I think, you know, in that kind of situation, he kind of reminds everyone about, you know, forgetting about Google, right? They're really huge. They're pretty technical. Um, but, you know, let's work harder. If you think we don't have the advantage, let's work harder with our customer to build a product better. So, you know, um, I think that, that actually benefits a lot, actually, for myself later on. Um, you know, we're still working on a lot of, uh, Startup stuff, the competition, the competitor is always something that bothers you. Okay, for everyone, it's the same thing. You know, it, it actually bothers the most because that, that actually directly cuts your revenue. It's, it's interfere with your business. It's going to kind of, you know, get the customers. Um, you know, we, I had a, some of the experience in that, that kind of situation as well. It's, uh, when you see that happens, our very first response is to you know fight with the competitors okay but that's actually the wrong way to go so always go back to focus on customer but you know essentially it's about the problem so what the what's their need what what are they requesting that's why they take Amazon really serious you guys um you guys can actually have a test okay i, I can tell you this a little like trick anytime you buy something from amazon you want to return it you want to refund and no matter how like how much you reuse a product, everything you can think about all this and um, reasonable, okay, kind of uh, excuse to return it, to ask for more, to replace it, to get a new copy or whatever yours you can think about. You can you can try it, okay. You can try to call them, you can try to email them. I can guarantee you know 80, 90 percent of the time they will satisfy what you're asking, even if you think that what you're asking is pretty much. Uh, you know, not right. Okay, so they can they can definitely get that one done. Okay, I'm I'm pretty confident with, with that direction because that's basically how they operate. They really don't mind losing some money, uh, the small amount of money that this group of customers are requesting, but they want to maintain a better uh, relationship. So that's why you know, take a look at this reputation table I shared with you last time. Now, now look at the what what's here on the table, the brand. Okay, Amazon is together with Apple with Disney. Uh, Johnson Johnson, this kind of companies, okay? It's, you might think about it, I don't know, it's just a very cheap e-commerce company, but their reputation is really, really high, okay? So this, you know, I look at the recent year, they're still one of the top three. So pretty difficult to, to get there with by a, like an e-commerce um, website. 
you know, a kind of a comparison. I don't know how many of you are familiar with Alibaba, uh, the Chinese e-commerce company. They're, they're huge too, very huge, okay? However, their reputation is terrible, not only in, 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 in the U.S., but also in China, their reputation is not really too good, especially when it comes to the e-commerce. So that's, that's really the huge differences. Okay, so it's a, it's a pretty big accomplishment done by uh, Amazon. All right, so anyway, I, I might have more stories to share about this one, but I think the key lesson here is about you know, how do you dig into, I, like Jeff Bezos mentioned, how do you identify your customers and then dig into their problem and just focus on solving other problems, all right? Okay, so some more examples, let me keep going. Um, Back in 2014, so we actually, so I worked this mobile AR company, if you remember, uh, from end of 2012 to 2013 for like a whole year. At the end of 2013, and one day I, you know, I remember clearly like in November, uh, we, we, we were supposed to go to San Francisco to do another demo. I forgot to, to which company. Uh, everything is set, the, the ticket is set, and then uh, a week, before that, I got a call from the VC. It's a very nice guy. I, I really like him a lot. He's a, at that time, he was the CEO of the company, but also coming from uh, the VC. And he called, oh, you know, um, just that you know that, you know, we, after some discussion, we uh, will not continue to fund this company from January next year. Um, so uh, you guys feel free to take all this uh, company back. Um, we don't need any of the pieces but uh, we, we just don't see the kind of a, uh, revenue growth as we expected, so we're gonna stop funding it, all right? So that's one call I got from the VC, which was a little bit ex expected because at that time, things wasn't going very well in terms of the sales and the revenue and also some of the future, right? But then what surprised me was that um, the VC, basically, they're pretty cool to me. I mean, I think they, they at that time, I think they took around a 70% equity of the company. But then at that time, basically what he told me was, okay, I don't need all the equity, even though I put $1 million there. You gotta take whatever you want to do, whatever you want. If you wanna continue with the company, you wanna keep doing that, running that with your team, totally fine. All right, so it's uh, really not a, 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 a big problem. All right, so that's what the VC told me. And then that's basically how the VC works. So every year they, they invested about 20 to 30 companies and then most companies actually will fail. So they really don't mind putting that one or $2 million on each company. However, for the one who actually uh, become more successful, then they, they raise the next round of money and then that's how they make money. Anyway, so that was the end of the story about that mobile company. And then at that time I, I had to choose what to do next because that time I was full time on that startup. And I, uh, my first thought was going back to big companies and then to do, you know, go back to Amazon, go back to maybe try more interview with Google, uh, Facebook. Uh, so those kind of, I did actually start the code briefly, okay, at that time. But um, later on, I still don't really see myself, you know, just uh, uh, being in a big company for a long time. So uh, uh, one thought I had was, you know, coming back to university to become faculty because I, I saw the uh, uh, the other professor I work really closely and being a faculty become professor is very flexible. You can really control whatever you want to do. Uh, you can still work on a project, you can still do startups. So that's kind of my goal. So, you know, I had that kind of a goal. So I started trying to do some application. But before everything got settled down, before I moved to California, and uh, I, I, I did actually a short postdoc in Vanderbilt University. And then the is one thing is kind of a temporary transition for me to go back to academia, but more importantly, at that time, we got this very cool project, which is this indoor navigation project. All right, so this one happens around two, so end of 2013 and early 2014. Now, the reason we build this indoor navigation, okay, again, this project is not something we brainstorm, oh, you know, we have half year time, let's think about doing something. We didn't do that. Also, this one is not like the mobile AR project that we start this one as a research project in school and then we try to form a company. It, it also wasn't that way. So this time I think we got the right direction. Okay, so the reason we do this project is because in the uh, early 2014 okay, in Nashville, Tennessee, so the city actually built this uh, big convention center 
Um, so it's a uh, near downtown. I'm not sure how many of you have been to Nashville. It's a pretty uh, popular city right now. It's uh, growing a lot in the south, and uh, they're pretty good. Uh, obviously, they have a lot of country music stuff, right? So that's their main thing. But recently, the the technology innovation, they're pretty strong in the medical field. Uh, there's some of the big medical companies and also big hospital groups. Um, but uh, this music city center is their convention center. So they name it music city center because they want to, you know, build everything around this country music scene. And this is a new building uh, open in 2014. Okay. Now obviously pretty nice facility, huge area. Yeah. I think it's two, two million square feet. Um, so the city actually, the mayor's office reached out to Vanderbilt university and asking that, Oh, you know, then we have this new music city center, but we're thinking about having some kind of mobile app to help people to navigate and to find their ways inside this building because we actually realized this is so difficult. It's like a maze. Okay, it's such a huge maze. Even we put all this away finding signs, it really doesn't work that well. So because you know this is the city in Nashville and the Vanderbilt was the uh, is the uh, best obviously institution in that city. So they have a lot of connections and relationship. So the mayor's office, and they have an innovation officer, they reach out to the computer science department at Vanderbilt University, and then somehow that request goes to our research group. So me and the other professor, we said, yeah, of course, that sounds good, let's actually do something with it. And then we actually then started to do some research to see how do we do the indoor navigation, right? The navigation is not really difficult, right? We actually use digital algorithm. Okay, if you have a map, everything set it up, the really difficult is how do you position yourself inside a building? Now, obviously we're not using GPS because the GPS, uh, first of all, you don't have a good signal um, inside a building. And secondly, the GPS doesn't tell you which floor you're at and it's really not accurate enough. So we did a lot of research and we figured out to use this Bluetooth technology and, uh, to, uh, and also machine learning and try to predict where you are with a fairly good um, uh, accuracy. And then we show you the navigation. And we got this uh, final prototype. I can is extending this innovation with a new mobile app that can pinpoint your location anywhere in the building and provide you with precise turn-by-turn photo-based directions to get to where you need to go, be it an event or the closest bathroom in the building. The app listens for Bluetooth low energy signals. All right, so that was, uh, you know, we use this uh, photo-based kind of a navigation, you know, once we know where you are and then you just one click, uh, you can search where you want to go. You know, think about a scenario, if you ever been to a convention center, right, you go to an event, normally you've got an agenda. You want to say, oh, I want to go to this talk at 10 o'clock. And then this is a room, conference room, uh, you know, 110. Okay, so then you look at a map to see where is the 110 and then you try to navigate and find it. But using this app, all you need to do is search the name of the talk and then we know the position and we know where you are, we directly show you that route. Okay, so that's how we solve this problem. So we delivered the prototype to the convention center. We didn't make a lot of money because it's mostly kind of a collaboration with the city. However, it got a very good story for us and for us later on to promote this part that we, we kind of say, oh, you know what, this one had been used by the city of Nashville and it is the newly convention center. It's two, two million square feet. Those are all very good numbers. Okay, so later on, we start to push this product. We push that to hot hotels as well as hospitals. In Nashville, there is a huge hotel. It's called um, uh, Opry Mills, I think. I'm not, not sure anyone been there. You know, if you've been there next time, you can go there. I think that is the largest hotel with the indoor, some kind of indoor settings. Okay, it's, it's, I think it's a the largest. It's even bigger than, than the ones in Las Vegas. Okay, they, they, they have a, this kind of indoor, the, the circuits right here, they have a lot of these indoor gardens and it's much bigger than the ones uh, you've been to in Vegas. Um, but anyway, we also did a lot of experiments there, but eventually we focused on hospitals. And then when we talk to hospitals, the people there are so excited because uh, the, the peri, you know, you know the, all the hospitals in the US, it's, it's a huge indoor environment and also normally multiple buildings. It's really difficult to find. I'm sure you guys don't really go to hospital very often. Next time, pay attention to it. You know, once you get to the parking lot, how do you get to your place and where to go? All of this is kind of a really, really difficult. All right. So um, every time we talk to these people, 
you know, we find it really easy to, 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 to test and then go forward with them uh, to do some kind of pilot project or prototypes. And especially when we work with hospitals, normally we are dealing with medical field, it's very tough. The bar is very high because of the patient, the security, the health issue, the patient data privacy issue, all of this it is, you know, you might think this is maybe one of the toughest domain to start something with all the creating all, all these, you know, requirements and guidance. However, when we were doing this one, we actually have to install a lot of hardware inside the hospital physically. But you will be surprised at how quickly they will approve everything because it's something they really need. Okay? And then as we were doing the testing, uh, it's very, very funny uh, because we were going, we have to go to the hospital to collect all the signal and data and to test our system. And we basically were like in the inside the hospital. Uh, I can tell you like every, on every, every 10 minutes, because we're normally in the entrance, like parking lot entrance somewhere, hospital entrance. Every 10 minutes, some stranger parent, patient will actually stop by and ask, oh, how, do you know how to get to the lobby? Do you know how to get to the parking lot? Do you know how to get to this lab or x-ray, whatever? Okay, every 10 minutes, somebody is asking, even though you saw the signs everywhere. Okay, so that's how I realized that this is a great problem to solve. And it turned out to be this company is getting actually a lot better than the other two. We didn't get any funding, um, but then we were able to get to two hospitals in Nashville and then another hospital in Austin, Texas. And then we're still kind of talking to some other hospitals. All right, so you know, this one again, is our kind of a third startup with, with the kind of same core team. And I suddenly started to realize that this path here is so much better and easier than the other two. And we even without any kind of funding, without any of the professional sales guys. Now, when I think about back, all this sales guy we hired in uh, the first startup, they were most MBAs, uh, Harvard MBA. We had a lot of Harvard MBA uh, like, uh, graduates. Um, it really doesn't solve the problem, okay? So because we didn't really get the right problem. Like this one, again, guys, this is an example. And we did not decide we want to do internet navigation because the city reached out to us and told us that they have this problem. Can you solve it? That's how we start to work on it. All right. So really keep in mind this kind of path I showed you last time. All right. Anytime you want to do a project and start up, that's great. Make sure you are going on the, on the left kind of path. Okay. There is clearly a problem and then you try to solve it and never go to the second route that, oh, you know, I recently wrote this algorithm and it's pretty efficient. And it actually beats a lot of other algorithms. It does a pretty good job. Or, oh, I recently saw the new library that does this image recognition really good or handwriting recognition very good. Can we actually think about something to do? Okay, these are very, very bad way of thinking uh, startup problem. Don't go that way. Okay, and also I would never recommend you guys as a team, oh, how about we have a team meeting today to brainstorm ideas, okay? You don't brainstorm startup ideas. You rarely can get that. You can have a meeting to discuss. The best way is you, everyone come up with some problem, then then bring it, and then let's see if that's a good problem to solve. But don't just sit there, get a coffee, go to Starbucks, and, and just brainstorm the ideas. Uh, very bad practice. All right, so any questions, comments? All right, so some other students' project examples. All right, so I've been teaching these two courses, two of my favorite courses. I try to teach this one every year, okay? I try to not teach. Uh, they structure algorithm, I taught a couple of times. I, I, I haven't done any of the 100 level courses, like discrete mathematics. I just find it so difficult to teach because I just love all the practical things and coding. Oh, that's it, all right. But uh, I, I've been doing this one every year. That's why I've got a chance to see a lot of projects. I try to encourage everyone, just like we're doing today, about this problem. In fact, some of you were in the 40, 499 class in the summer, in the spring, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Um, so eventually, yeah, I do see students all come with a good problem and, and project to solve, right? So this is the very first group of project I had. Uh, we're doing the 480 class back in 2015. Um, everybody already graduated. A lot of them were in Google. Not a lot, okay. Some of these members are in Google, in Apple. 
uh, I might be able to invite some of those to come back to give us some other talks. Last year, Isaac, who is one of the founders in this uh, grocery for, for us project, and he's in Apple right now. He actually went, came back last fall to give us a talk in the 480 class in, uh, in fall, I think September last year. So uh, I think with the online situation, I think it's even easier to get those alumni back. But anyway, we, we got this 10 projects built and then you know, I, I still remember some of this cool, uh, you know, project they did. All right, so that was one. And then later on, we did more of those sessions. In 2015, we got a little bit more projects. Some of these guys were in Microsoft. They, they, some of them were actually right now are doing their own startups. Some of these, them are in the game companies. And then this is a master level for courses. And then they deliver something similar. Um, can't remember anyone in some special company. Some of those are in Amazon, maybe Google. And then this one is 2016. Um, well, I didn't really find, uh, really uh, get all this icons since then. It's just too many, okay? So especially in the past years, 2018, 2019, we got these large groups and every year we'll have about 15 to 20 projects and much more than before. So uh, I didn't really put those one here, but I have a website that can, you can find all those projects. Now this is a 499 project for mobile app class. Okay, so it's just a mobile application, but the idea is the same. I ask everyone to think about problem and do whatever you want, as long as it's solved a concrete problem in your life. Okay, so these are the 28 apps we had in the beginning and a little bit more apps. Um, so we got a lot of those. Again, these are all, you know, you can see back to 2016. I just didn't got a chance to summarize all of this. It's too many. There are too many apps. I think for the app, we probably publish over at least 200 to 300 apps already in Google Play in the past four years. So a lot of things have been done and there are actually a lot of successful ones, all right? So as I was talking about the problem, okay, could you guys guess what's the, when I asked about this one to our students and eventually you start to see the project all kind of falls into the same categories. Could you guys comment and guess what the, what are the top three biggest problem our students like to mention? The problem people, Cal Poly student mentioned most. Parking, what else, tuition? Mm -hmm. Waiting list, okay. Waiting list actually wasn't being mentioned too much because um, theoretically there are not much things you can do with it. Uh, it's very hard for you to do a software to get it. And some people wrote a script to get that one, but I don't know how effective it is. From what I heard most of the time, the situation is you don't even have a priority. So that kind of robot clicker uh, won't help too much. Yeah, scheduling, getting job, yeah. So here are the, the, the problem I heard most. Okay, what to play? Um, what kind of movie to see, movie reviews, and then concert, that's another thing. How do we go to concert together? Fun, you know, couple go to concert. Uh, uh, campus activities, club stuff. Okay, more about entertainment. This is the one big category. Eat is a very, very important problem, okay? Every uh, semester, we can see some of the project about what to eat. How do I decide what to eat? That's really funny. I see at least you know three projects that does something to help you to make an eating decision. I don't know which restaurant to choose. I can can I get a game to decide that? Can I get a random choice to decide that? I always find it difficult to understand that problem. I never had a problem deciding what to eat. Uh, obviously, you guys have too many choices. Um, so that's another kind of a. Uh, uh, interesting problem. And obviously parking, that's the number one uh, problem. And then we do see quite a lot of good solutions over the past year. And then I kind of see the solutions become better and better. Um, but then again, this one here, we'll talk a little bit more about it. And um, there are some kind of limitations to solve it. Again, you, it's very difficult to solve it completely. Uh, so anyway, so you can see, but this year I expect to see a lot of more different things. Okay, you know, especially with this uh, virus situation. All right, so let me talk about some of these cool projects. I did mention about this one in the mobile class, if you guys do remember, okay? But for those who don't know about this one, let me tell you about this story. 
So this is a project not from the 480 class, but it's actually coming from this mobile class back in 2015. And uh, so I asked everyone, okay, go back to find out the problem, decide your project idea and come back this idea to me, with me. And one day the score stopped by and then she already graduated. And then she said, uh, Professor, I want to do this uh, project. Can you tell me if it's okay? I said, yeah, please go ahead. So she said that, oh, I, I actually like, uh, you know, uh, playing Minecraft. Okay, not sure how many of you still play Minecraft. At that time, I briefly know what Minecraft is. I never played it. I don't think I even seen it, but I know the graph is what the graph looks. I know that's a game. Um, so she said, well, I said, yeah, okay, good. No, so what's the problem? So she said that, you know, I have this problem of knowing all these recipes to making all these different items. Uh, when I play the game, obviously you guys probably won't need this one if, it's, if you're very good that you know exactly what to, to get and generate some other items. But this kind of recipes, she found it very difficult. She said there are some website that shows you this one, but you have to go to the website to check it out. Not very convenient. Now she said, what if I make this kind of a uh, recipe app that you can drag and drop all the items and then it automatically shows you what the, what it can generate and then or if I want to generate this specific item, what are the recipes I need? Okay, so that was her idea. And I immediately got it. So I said, yeah, that's, that's good. Uh, sounds like a good problem about this game. So yeah, go ahead. I'm okay to go ahead and do it. Uh, but to be honest with you guys, at that time I wasn't very impressed by this idea because well, number one is, is about like a little helper for the game. Um, I don't really, I'm not very into this game. And then also, I'm, I'm not sure how big the problem is. And the more important, I feel that you're not really making a game, you're just making a helper, a utility app to this game. That kind of a, you know, sounds very you know, less significant to me, especially technically, right? So, but you know, I can see her passion on Minecraft. I said, yeah, that's, that's great, let's go ahead and do it. So actually she made it. So this is actually the app she made at the end, okay, on this image here. The app was actually really simple. Uh, the app has only one screen, just like this screen you see here, only one screen. It doesn't have very fancy multiple like uh, pages you can go back and forth, just one, very easy to use. As you can see, now you, you, you have this little boxes at the top, then you can drag and drop all this item into this grid, or you can drag and drop this item into the other target box. No matter what you draw, and then the system will always figure out what you can generate or what the item you need. And that's it, that is a utility app. This app is so simple that it doesn't even need a, a backend. So a lot of apps they do with the backend database communication, they, because this is just a standalone app on your phone. And he, she hard code all these recipes. But she still spent a lot of time to hard code a lot of recipes. I don't think she covered 100%, but she did have a lot of this, all right? So that was the app she um, developed, all right? And that is what's, what's really surprised us was at the end of the semester or quarter, we asked everyone to publish your app in Google Play. That was my requirement. Just like you guys, I want everyone to publish your project. I'll talk more about that one today. So she did, okay, everyone did it. I still have some of this app in my Google account. And then this app turns out to be the number one most downloaded app from this whole class. Within only six weeks, she got over 3,000 downloads from Google Play. Okay, from all random users. And obviously she didn't do any kind of promotional marketing. She just put the app there and then 3,000 downloads within six weeks. Not sure how many of you have ever published apps. You can try how, how long, how, how much time it's gonna take you to get 3,000 downloads. It's really difficult, okay? Especially today, it's, get, it's very, very hard for people to download new apps. Think about how many new apps you're downloading every day. Not many, you are only staying to these top apps every single day, all right? So she did it. And also a very interesting comparison, okay? Now, uh, this student, Marion, okay, she, I think she works in, in some of the software companies in Southern California, I can't remember where. Um, she, she was a very good student, obviously, um, but she, in terms of coding, okay, I wouldn't call her as a, like a top coder, that type of student, no, obviously not. Okay, and then in fact, the class also had a lot of other students who eventually went to Google, uh, who did an internship in Amazon, who also later on went to 
you know, Microsoft, we got a top coder in that, in that class. It's a senior class. Okay, I know some of the students very well. I even work with some of them very closely. There were top coders. They made really complicated things. I remember one guy really made a scavenger hand app, a game using a Google Street View. So she, he integrated a Google Street View and into the app. And then you basically have to go through the Google Street View and find all these items. And then eventually compete with people real time by all this kind of ranking system. It's pretty sophisticated, okay? Um, however, those kind of apps only get $100, maybe $50, $150, all right? But this one, as you can see, even though it's really simple, this is the most downloaded app. Now, the end story of this app is that we actually have to unpublish that because very quickly, I think after three months, Microsoft emailed us. Actually, it goes to my email account because some of the students were using my Google uh, Play to publish it. But told us, oh, you know, you are actually using the assets from the Minecraft game. All these images you're using, that's our assets. Um, at that time, Microsoft already bought Minecraft. So you have to unpublish this one, okay? And then I, at that time, I didn't take it seriously, okay? I, I don't think Microsoft is gonna sue me or sue whatever. Uh, I just didn't, I didn't reply. I saw, I, I feel that's a kind of a, just a system email uh, sent by Microsoft. Uh, but very quickly, Google paid basically automatically and published it. I didn't do anything but Google and published it. Um, but you know, the, the, the thing here is I believe if this app doesn't get much traffic, I don't think Microsoft is gonna bother to, to, to write to us. It just shows that how popular this app would uh, become. Um, and also, I'm not, I'm not sure that there, there had to be some other alternatives, maybe even better than this one, more powerful, but it really doesn't matter. People will download, okay? Because when people download something, they're not gonna judge your app based on how many lines of code you write. They don't judge your app by who wrote it because they don't know you, whether you're top coders or not. They really don't care if you're the backend or not. They don't care how many screens you have. No, all they care is if this is something that interesting to them by providing some kind of value and some kind of good usage. All right, so I really want to you to really think through this example here. It's the best example that shows you solving the problem is so much more important than being very, very, very technical, okay? I love technical stuff, okay? I, I like coding. Um, I can do well words. I can, I can, I like to use all the new libraries. It's a lot of fun but that's only part of the solution, okay? It, it just has nothing to do with um, the success of your product at the end. So really keep this in mind. This is from our own students, okay? This is not outside students. All right, so that's one example, keep in mind. This app comes from the same group, same class. This is the second most downloaded app in that group. Okay, this one is more technical. The problem this guy is trying to solve is very funny. I, I talked about this one in the 4D class, sorry, the, the mobile class. So he, um, he said that, well, I uh, have this problem that every time when I chat with my girlfriend, I have to do the video chat. And then, but you know, it's, it's, it's not that like a one minute call, okay? It's gonna be taking a half hour, one hour, or even more. But um, I don't wanna stay in this full screen video chat all the time. And I wanna do something else while I'm chatting. All right, but you know, this is the back in 2015. Nowadays, a lot of this video chat, you can minimize the window, you can, you can go to your browser, you can do whatever you want, right? At that time, this is not a very common option, okay? I, we don't even remember anyone can do this. Okay, so he built this one. He built this kind of a, a little screen here. You can uh, put that into the uh, you know, corner of the screen. Uh, Android, this is not very difficult to do. Uh, you can make some this kind of a long care app or whatever it's called. You can make this floating window here and then that shows on top of other apps. So this is totally doable and not really that difficult. All right, so that was his app. And he actually imp imp implemented the video streaming chatting, but he didn't do the backend by himself. He used a third party library to support the video chatting. So that was a very cool project. Now this project obviously is a much more uh, technical than the first one, but, um, uh, but the, again, the success is not because of the video chatting, the success is because this specific feature. Uh, to be honest, in 2015, there wasn't many apps that support this kind of video chat. 
All right, and this one got like a two star downloads. I didn't really track how many more he got eventually, uh, but uh, definitely the second most downloaded app. All right. This one, uh, if you remember in the summer, I also talked about this one. All right. Uh, so uh, the problem here is your schedule choosing your classes. I know you guys had a bigger problem of, uh, you know, getting through the waiting list. All right. So, um, so that's, uh, I think that problem, I think needs some different solution. Uh, but this one is more about how do you choose the class that satisfies your schedule. All right. So for example, I only want to choose the class on, on Tuesday and Thursdays. And then so that I can get my things done in the middle of the week so I can get a long weekend. That's how I want to do my class on Tuesday. So I guess most professors want to do that, right? Because I, I can have my Monday and Friday just like a weekend. So Monday, having class on Monday isn't good because that's going to ruin my, my Sunday because you, you realize you have something to prepare. So that's a lesson I learned in the first year. Since then, I, I never try to do this class on, on Monday. So all my classes are always on Tuesday, Thursday. I guess you guys will feel the same. Um, anyway, so that's, that was the problem. How do we make and find out this best schedule for my preferences? Okay, so Isaac, this is the guy who I mentioned in Apple right now. So he made this application called Bronco Scheduler. So that was a domain name, but I don't think the website is still up and running. I think they stopped at some point. So the website is really easy to use. You choose the filters, okay? You choose the class days and time frame you want to be on campus. You also choose the class that you want to take and add them. And then this system automatically gives you all the combinations you can choose to that set it to find this kind of a schedule. Okay, and then they actually use a web scraping to get all the classes from the Bronco scheduler every day because they don't have the access to the class time, but they can actually get everything from the, uh, from the public data. And then the, the UI is very easy to use. It's the only one page you, you, you choose all the filters and then it generates all of these items, all right? But this is the typical web service. Okay, this is kind of a project, you know, you can actually also think about to do. Um, but then this project becomes so successful because later on I ask him, so how many people are visiting your site? He told me around 2016, uh, I think around that period of time, 15, 16, uh, they can get a 2,000 visit per day in the peak season, like just in the first week of the semester or first week of the quarter. There are over 2,000 people are visiting that site, and this is for Cal Poly only, okay? And then I had a question for him. I said, oh, this is very impressive. I mean, 2,000, that's a lot of traffic. And so how did you guys actually get all the traffic? How did you market this one? I never heard about Bronco Scheduler. How do you let students know? And then he basically told me two things. Number one, he said, well, I try to post this link in some of the different social media groups, especially in Facebook. And he said there are a bunch of uh, Facebook groups in, in, in campus, some of those official ones, some of the unofficial ones, but that's one way he can publish this one really easy. He already didn't spend money to do the advertisement. And the second one, he said something that really shocked me was, it, as he said, every day uh, after, uh, at the, uh, in the evening after, the schools, you know, class almost done. Z these guys actually have a small team, okay, two or three students. They went to every single classroom on campus. Okay, think about all the building, a um, library or whatever classroom you, you normally go. They actually went out to every single classroom and they write down their URL on the whiteboard in, in, front, in front of the classroom. Okay, so that next day when people go to the classroom, they can see that URL and then that sounds very interesting. And then they go to web, uh, the website and then find it. Okay, I really want to share this is second story I just mentioned here, you know, how these guys are executing to promoting this one. So you might, again, this one come back to this kind of a common question a lot of students ask me, oh, you know, this one is not new, it's already done. Or, you know, somebody already did it, do I still want to do it? And eventually, it really doesn't matter about how new your idea is because nothing is new. You can't really find an idea that's not new. You can, you can try it. You know, anything you come up with today, this, this time for your project, I'm pretty sure there are tons of stuff already being done there, uh, probably even better than yours. But that doesn't really matter, okay? Because you can always find out your unique group, your unique feature, and more importantly, it's all about how you execute it. A lot of the time, people just come up with ideas they never been able to, to implement it. A lot of people implemented it, but they never been able to 
um, to, to get user to use this one, to promote it. Marketing, sales, this is actually far more difficult than writing the code. And think about how difficult it is. You know, are you going to, you know, can you do the same thing? Are you able to talk to the strangers and then let them do your thing? Most people cannot do that. That's why most people cannot succeed in startups. Okay, so all of this one takes effort, but I'm really surprised on how these guys are able to execute this one at this level. You know, posting things in Facebook is much easier, but going to the campus and writing this one to all those classrooms and really to promote them by themselves, um, that's something that everyone can really learn. Again, this is a Cal Poly alumni. I'm not talking about Stanford, like a successful CEO or whatever. This is our student, and he works in Apple in, in Austin, Texas. I can bring him in uh, to give another talk sometime this semester. Uh, this is the real story. And then at the end, he said that at one point, they had an ad sponsor from a local restaurant. I forgot which restaurant, but they put a banner at the top of the website, and then they paid them like $60 per month. Uh, that's enough to cover their server cost, All right? So this one is, is a great example for you guys to think about, okay? Simple function, but really useful, but more importantly, promoted, okay? Now think about this is only for Cal Poly. If you just make a little bit more efforts to make it off of the all CSU system, and think about how many users you can get. This is 2,000 bits per day. If you can get to 20 campuses, that's gonna be 20, 40,000, right, per day. If you get a trap website with 40,000 traffic per day, that's huge, okay? You can make a lot of money with ads, all right? So, so startup sounds difficult, but it all comes from this really small version of the project. Um, again, they don't have any of the professional developers. It's just two or three. I think they have three team members, but two of them did the most of the work. And that's it, okay? Uh, you might think, oh, this UI is, is okay. It's not really best. I agree. There are a lot of things to improve it. Doesn't matter, you they, they implement it, okay? They promote it, and then they, they just let people to use, and um, and that's that's all about how you do the startup step by step. All right, hopefully you get some kind of ideas from the stars. This is the parking problem. We've seen different kind of uh, solutions. Okay, the first solution we saw was in two thousand. Uh, this one is in the second class of two thousand five in fall, I think. Uh, Zach is a kind of a, I have a very good relationship with him. He, he come back to talk to us very often. I can still bring him in. He's in Google right now. Uh, very good students. He graduated in 2016. I did a lot of other work with him together. So uh, this is solution he came up with this. A lot of you probably saw about this one before. Uh, it's basically about this exchange idea, right? So you have a, I have a parking spot. I need to go back to my parking spot from some kind of building that's going to take me 10 minutes, 15 minutes to walk. I don't want to walk. Somebody coming into the campus right now who don't have a spot, and then you kind of exchange, just like Uber. This new guy actually gave you a ride to your parking spot, and then you gave your parking spot to this new guy to park. Okay, so he built this web platform for you to kind of exchange and communicate and then pair together. So this is the most typical idea we have seen from our students. This is the web version. We also seen a much more polished mobile version later on, and then um, also built by our students, all right? So, but this one, he didn't got too much chance to try it, okay? I do have another group. I don't have the information here. Uh, the brothers, they they did a mobile solution and back in 2017 or 18. I even helped to send an email to our sales department. Not sure anyone, got a chance to receive that email, you know, two or three years ago, uh, but they're all graduated. So they, um, yeah, they, they build a mobile version that's much more polished and professional, okay? However, I can tell you this idea, guys, this one here, um, you will have a lot of pressure to implement this one um, on campus just because of all the security um, concern, just because of all this regulation concerns. And the schools, it doesn't want you to promote this one. And I don't think the school can um, officially, like, um, um, uh, basically, um, totally disable this app. I don't think they have that right, but they're not going to sponsor this one. They're not going to promote this one because two concerns: one is the security, one is the in-campus traffic. They don't want to create on-campus traffic because if you have all of this one, just like a lot of Uber cars, and it's going to make campus very 
uh, crowded and also very dangerous, right? So uh, that's the main reason that this idea is still kind of hard to be put into practice. Um, but you know, according to students, a lot of students agree that this is a very good problem. And then they, I haven't heard so many of you actually told me that they, they, they are willing to pay to get to, back to the car, car, uh, parking garage, especially if you park somewhere crazy far, right? So uh, that kind of a, um, the solution we have seen over the past years, right? Let me see the, sorry, I didn't see the comments. Let me see some. Um, Put my the chat window here. Um, all right, yeah, so sorry, I was just reading your comments here. Okay, yeah, so, but anyway, so if you want to still solve the parking problem, I would recommend you solve it from a different angle or perspective, come up with something more. Um, whether it's about like monitoring the spaces or something or others other than, than the, the exchange, okay? So this is the one. All right, and then this is the purely to, to find the parking space. It has nothing to do with um, uh, like a, this kind of a right idea. This is a simpler one, but I want to mention this one because um, this, this guy here, so this is actually the brother I mentioned. They built the, the other app for the campus right. I think it's called a campus right app. And then, but at the same time, they build a lot of other things. And then this is a one project they build where, how do you find and record a parking spot? Now this app is so much simpler. Basically you park somewhere, they use the GPS to record where you park, and you can put some comments, you can show a video, you can take a picture, just, just to help yourself to remember where you park, okay? I guess a lot of you probably won't need this one, right? So you don't have problem remembering it, but you know, there will be a lot of people who need this one. And then the reason I want to point on this one is because this app, and then they got, okay, this is the old number, okay? The, the time I saw this, I don't know when, it's, it was already 50,000 downloads. And then later on, I remember it's already past 100,000 downloads. I didn't update the slides, okay? 100,000 downloads of this app. When your downloads get to that level, uh, of, of course, they're not really huge apps, but you can, you can already use that one to generate the revenues. Okay, because that's gonna create a certain number of active users, and then you can integrate the ads into this app, and then that's gonna turn some turn into some kind of ad revenues. So I remember they put ads, they also have a professional version without an app, but I think he told me that he can generate like two or three hundred dollars per month, okay, based on this one. Which is a lot, okay, because the two or two or three hundred dollars is not a lot, but the nice thing about this revenue is, is some kind of a passive income. Let's think about that. I don't know if you heard about this term, okay? We call, talk about active income or passive inter, uh, income. Active income means that you have to work for a job to get the money. The passive income is that you just sleep there and can get the money. And this is a type of passive income if you got this kind of ad revenue. Another example is you kind of a, do a real estate, you rent, a, you rent your house and the rental income, that's also passive, right? So I'll talk more about those one in the future, but uh, that's why this two or $300, I think it's, it's pretty good, okay? Um, but again, the app itself is really not difficult. This app, I think, for those of you who know about mobile development, you can probably do that within one or two days. You can edit that. It's really a simple, simple thing to do, all right? Uh, but that's, you know, getting the right problem, you know, something, some people are gonna use that. And then one of the brothers even made another one. This, this one is for like a, gamers. He said he has so many games on the phone, it's not organized. So he built this Android launcher app that automatically classify and find out all the game apps, automatically group them into this one. So you got a folder, you click on that, and then you can um, um, uh, find all the app, uh, sorry, games in the same folder. He even added this uh, boost performance feature where you click on the app and then it's gonna um, you know, uh, clear all the memory and give you some kind of a performance boost. It looks like you got a boost, but all, all he does was cleaning some kind of memory, some kind of garbage collection thing. So, but you know, to user, when you see this kind of a dashboard, people feel that you are boosting the performance. You sometimes feel your phone is faster. So um, he told me this idea in the early summer and then he made it at the end of the summer and then after the publish, he 
he got over one fifteen thousand downloads already at that time. I don't know when. I don't. This I, I think I'm pretty sure he's still there. Okay, you should be able to still find. Let's actually try to find it. So, game launcher. Um, I feel it had to be still there. Okay, so. Okay, my computer froze. Yeah, this one, as you can see, it's uh, when you search this one, the first one you find. And this one here, okay, guys, take a look at the number, okay? 8,000 reviews, okay? So you can see how many downloads you got, right? So that's gonna be a big number right now. Uh, the numbers are a million downloads, all right? So as you can see how, how the, the slides that, when I made this slide, that, this was like two or three years ago, okay? Um, right now it's a million downloads. Okay, this guy is uh, pretty well, but I know the two brothers. They are pretty uh, like uh, good. Okay, they're really good at like getting things done. They got an idea. They no matter what. Okay, they got these things done. Uh, it's really impressive. Okay, so um, again, the app itself is really not that difficult. What they do is they they use the Android permission stuff to get all the app information. Uh, and, but then they do have their own database to know which app is a game. Okay, so they group them. And then you, you click on that one to start the app, it boosts performance. It really doesn't do much sophisticated things. Okay, just clear the memory, whatever they do from Java. So it's just, I, I doubt how much performance you can boost. And then you, you can, oh, that he did some of the recording features, that's why. Okay, you, you got some of the recording features from other things. All right, so that's the app. Okay, so he even implemented this kind of thing, just like iPhone. All right, it's some of the UI uh, work. Okay, uh, very impressive. As you can see, eight thousand down, uh, eight thousand reviews, and the one million downloads. Okay, so again today, I mean, uh, it's very hard to believe that you can get this number. Okay, it's really difficult, and you can even I don't know how much revenue they generated. It should be quite a lot. Okay, so this is our own students. Now this guy, he's a younger brother. He had a twins, uh, bigger brother. Uh, they graduate in our program, I think using two and a half years. And then at the end, they got multiple offers. Eventually, they actually both got offered from Discord in the beginning, but they turned it down. Eventually the older brother goes to um, Apple and the younger one go to Google. So they, 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 they live in Mountain View right now. So pretty uh, smart guys. Okay, so very impressive. And they, they just, uh, but again, guys, I, I know that you might think, oh, this is some kind of what we call good student. They're pretty good. It, it's okay, okay. They're they're good. They're smart. But I want you, to, I want to show you that the app they're making, this ones, is really not that difficult. This one and also the parking one. Okay, so you can think about. You can take a look at his other apps. He has this parking thing. This thing here. Let's see how many downloads. Okay, this one not even as many as the other one. So this one, 6,000 uh, reviews, and then uh, downloads is, where is it showing downloads? Yeah, also one million, okay. So, you know, this guy is in his early 20s, okay. So he has apps with two, like apps with two uh, million downloads. And what, what is this one? Smart drawer, what, what is that? Organize, I, yeah, I think this is similar to the one he built for the other one. All right, so yeah, it's kind of an advanced version for the other one. So to manage the apps, okay. So, so already 2,000 downloads, um, reviews, and then 500. So it's, uh, you know, it's really impressive, okay. But again, trust me, this kind of thing is not difficult to make, okay. So pretty basic Android stuff. It's not difficult at all, okay. Uh, it's not really something that you think that's hard to reach, right. Anyway, uh, just some kind of motivations and uh, see what we have done before. Uh, student, this is some other ideas, you know, finding parties, good parties. And then student mentioned the bigger the problem, where to find a good party, which means a good, you know, male, female ratio, right? So people made some of this project about um, <laughs> reading party real time and fun party. Not sure this is used right now. And then people uh, do this trouble thing. He said there's a problem that um, you um, 
some of the travel agencies, right? They rent this bus. For example, they take the passenger from LA to Vegas. And then you might think that the bus will come back with all the passengers, but a lot of passengers actually fly to some other cities. Okay, so they come back with a empty bus. All right, so our student made a project to, you know, uh, just like Uber that you can take advantage of this empty bus back home and then try to uh, get other people to use that resource together. All right. Um, I also want to share some of the high school projects. Okay, let me show you a couple of good ones. Um, I mentored some of the high school students. Now, this one is about the tech distraction. Let's think about that you, uh, uh, you write something using computer, but you can't focus. You look at your phone, you watch YouTube, you watch Facebook, what, you watch whatever, but you just don't want to type, okay? So <laughs> this, this girl actually made a locker, a physical locker that put your phone there. You can't really unlock it until, until you get your things done. He got a, this nice prototype, okay, let me put this one. So he built this locker by herself, and then there's a Raspberry, Raspberry Pi here that control the lock, electrical lock. You can put your phone there, and then you set up some kind of tasks, and then until the task is done, this one won't be locked, won't, won't be unlocked. So this is the locked. And now she's just saying that, oh, just assume that you have something to finish and you're typing, writing. When this one is done, the moment you're done, this one is automatically opened and unlocked. So he's using the phone to simulate it, but the phone shows you that you can type something, then finish your task, and then that's gonna trigger that signal. All right, so that's the project, you know, that's all the problem. Uh, this is another favorite, one of my favorite projects in the past two years, okay? It's done by a ninth grade student. So not sure how many of you play piano or some other instruments, I never done that. Um, so I, I went down, I was talking this problem thing with her, to him. And then he started talking about this piano. He said that, well, you know, um, one big problem about playing piano is the, the flipping the music notes by yourself. While you're playing, you have to turn it, all the pages, right? Not very convenient. Even if you've never done the piano, you can imagine it's not something very convenient. Um, so he even told me that he, for the professional pianos, that's like this one, you know, you can see there's a, somebody sitting beside the pianist. And, you know, he said that in the professional world, there are actually people that's just going to put the pages for the for the for the piano list, all right. Um, but obviously, you won't have this one at home. Somebody sitting there to put the pages for you, right? So, the question, the problem is, how can we automatically put the pages? So he made this kind of very cool project. Okay, so this one he built a like iPad app because for the iPad you can uh, put all this uh, music notes nicely as images, but at the same time you can. Uh, let the app to listen to the sound and then he tried to recognize the sound and then to see where he is playing. If the sound reaches to the end of the page, we'll automatically switch the page to the next image. Okay, so here's the demo, take a look. Again, I never played piano, but I can see the problem. This one is pretty little bit difficult to do. This is one of the best demos, um, but it's a little bit hard than we saw to get this one accurate. But right now, at that time, we didn't use the machine, uh, the deep learning stuff. But I guess if we use the deep learning today, I think it may be better. <clears throat> at that time, I was looking at some of the 
uh, an algorithm used by this uh, Shazam app, right? So uh, there is a, is a very kind of not many information published because it's protected, but you can still find some of the prototype people then about this, uh, uh, how do you feature and extract the features from the song. So that's how uh, we implement this one. Okay, so again, very good project that solves this problem. Okay, so anyone who plays piano when I talk to them about this idea, they all agree and then they all love to use it, right? So that's it, okay, that, these are all the examples I wanna share with you, all right? So hopefully now you got my point about this whole problem thing, okay? Now, the, um, what you need to do is actually find out the problem that you wanna solve. Um, but, you know, again, it's, it's not really that easy that everyone can come with this kind of awesome problem that really um, impresses everyone. Uh, so, but then you need to go through the right directions. Okay, my suggestion is that, you know, I want you to think about the key to get this good problems is that, think about this guy here, he plays piano, that's why he knows it. The other girl, she said that this kind of distraction thing bothers her. Um, the, the game launcher thing, um, he told me that he has so many apps on his phone that's why he actually has a motivation to build this one. I never had this motivation because I never play game anymore. It's, you know, since many years ago, I don't have time. And I don't have any games installed on my phone. You can never ask me to think about that kind of idea. So he had that kind of experience that, that's not really good. So he knows exactly what, what he needs. And it turns out to be some other user who shares similar background who share the same problem. Uh, Minecraft example because she was very into that Minecraft game. That's why she is really um, willing to make something. The video chat example, because that guy was chatting with his girlfriend and try to escape from the chatting all the time, right? So all of this, hopefully you guys see my point, all right? So get this a problem, you actually have to come back to your own life, okay? Not somebody else's life not some domains that you've never been before. Okay, you cannot find the problems, all right? So for example, if I'm asking right now, what is the Amazon problem inside like uh, some of the teams? I want you to guess, you can't even guess problem. You can't even make up problem. You, you have zero experience, all right? So when I talk about problem, you don't need to go too big, okay? Let's not really talk about the global warming problem, okay? So who cares, right? So, so that's not some problem we can solve. And then you really know nothing about that problem, okay? Come back to your, your own life. It's just the things that you are very familiar with. You're experiencing every day. Or, or you know, um, your, your friend, your family, that's also fun, okay? Uh, otherwise, it's a very difficult to get the good problems. So that's why my advice after these two lectures is that forget about your coding, your all the skills you know. Okay, JavaScript, React, you know mobile, you know AI, it doesn't matter. Okay, forget about all of those. Don't let those things to drive your ideas. Just come back to your life. Just review every day what you're doing. What are the things that bothers you? And, and then pick one or two or three and then see if you can derive some of the technical solutions from it. That way you will actually get really good um, problems. All right, so that's all I wanna to share today. So any questions? Yeah, so a lot of you, yeah, so when I, you know, when I talk to the high school kids, most of them will talk to me, well, when, when we talk about problem, they, they're, they're going to basically um, uh, say that I don't have any problems. All right, so, but normally the way I like to go with them is I'll ask them, what's your hobby? Okay, what are things you do very often, your experiences? And obviously you're gonna talk a lot about a game, right? Uh, but um, trust me, I, I never had a situation where people can't really tell me problems. So that's why um, the, the, the problem we're, we're looking at right now are really the very specific, maybe tiny problems. 
you don't really need to think about big your problem because you really don't know that much. You know, we ask you to build a Google like a search type of stuff. Okay, so there's no way you can build it nicely. Um, you don't know anything about that field, right? So just do something that relevant to to our uh, student life, college students. And because if you do something with that one, it's also easier for you to promote it later on. For example, the scheduler. You make that one, you can have a couple of students to use, right? And then otherwise, if you let's say you make, you make a new social media app, a chat app, messaging app, how can you promote it? And who's going to use yours? And how can you reach out to the general public to use that one? Okay, very difficult. So you do something related with your experience, so your experience can help you to, to promote it later on. Yeah, I, I totally agree. Coming up with a good problem is definitely more important than solving them. All right. Uh, but, you know, the problem you come normally is not going to be unique. All right. So afterwards, it's still about how you execute, implement, and solving it. All right. All right. Yeah. So, yeah, video will go to YouTube. And uh, before I forgot, okay, let me actually do that. Um, and then, uh, let's see. All right, so I'll put that into this uh, playlist. All right, and then, uh, so again, guys, for, for your team communication, okay, make sure that you guys have some kind of a communication channel. Now, you need some kind of pure, serious meetings every week, okay? So uh, if not, I just worry that some of you pretty much will, will um, not do anything, all right? So that's actually not good. Eventually, I told you, even it's a team project, we will actually evaluate everyone's efforts. Oh, so now's question, is it better to solve a business problem, or daily life problem? That, that's, that, that's my point though. It, it really doesn't matter. Well, because you can see some of the su successful company that does the uh, regular consumers. You can see some startups that does really well in a business field, right? So the, the two to be business. Uh, either way it can work out. The, the thing is, which one are you familiar with, okay? Are you familiar with some uh, some of the business problems? I, I do have see, see students. Some students tell me about the problem they have in restaurants uh, when they work as waiter. I see students who who told me about some of the problem they face in the clinics while they do the working there. Yeah, the bottom line is you must be very familiar with that business or the the daily life. Otherwise, you don't know what that problem is. Okay, and also you you don't know exactly what people need. Okay, it really doesn't matter. Business, daily life, either is good, but the question is, are you familiar with it? If you're not familiar with it, you can't you can come up with good problems or you can't really find the real problems. Let's think about that target example. Now, we all agree that you, 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 now when we look at back, we felt it's really funny and ridiculous because the team of the three, there's the CEO, there's the sales guy and myself. Okay, I didn't care too much about this business pitches, but they both from Harvard Business School. Okay, they just went there to say, oh, you know, you can take a picture of your product in, in the, inside the target and then just recognize the product. It's, it's such a very stupid idea, actually. Okay, it's simply because they never work in the retail domain. It's not because they're not experienced or they're not smart. They just don't have the experience. And however, the, the target team, they have experimental stores. Okay, I remember it's somewhere near uh, Southern Center, San Francisco. Daily City or some, somewhere near that area, you guys might be in there. Uh, it's one of the stores there, it's their experiment store, okay? They set up a lot of experiments every day to test their customers for different kinds of things, 
Okay, they do the research, they know exactly what their problem is. Okay, so it's about experience. Make sure you know something are, um, you know, uh, uh, a real a problem are real. Um, I have, I think I put the slides somewhere here. Let me double check. Right. So for slide, because my slides are really large, so I, I think I put a lot of those ones here. Okay, just send us this link here. Um, um, I don't think we're gonna change the slide dramatically, but I will make sure to update it as well. All right, so now this week it's time to decide your final project idea, okay? Make sure you got that then. Now look at my, my uh, assignment, okay? I think we should do a kind of idea pitch next Thursday, okay? It's one week from today. Um, nothing long, but you need to do a kind of a customer interview, user interview, not your, your own teammates, but somebody else, all right? So uh, get that done as soon as you can. Uh, otherwise, you can't move on with the project. Oh, by the way, are still anyone still uh, needing a team? Uh, we have a Discord, okay? Feel free to uh, jump there to chat and then get our team finalized as soon as you can. Let me see if there are any kind of a question from here. All right, Jimmy still need a team, okay? Just, uh, I think there are some, a couple of new students just joined, okay? Uh, please uh, get this one. Um, yeah. All right, so if you guys don't have questions, I will see you next week, okay? Problem, okay? Come back and think about all your problems, okay? You will have problems, guys. Um, definitely problems. Think more about those. All right, so I'm still here, okay, for another three minutes. Feel free to. Uh, Professor, I have a question. Yes, yes, Gina, go ahead. Um, actually, can I get clarification on the project? Is it eventually supposed to be like an app or more of a web service? Yes, so I, I told that, uh, I mentioned that on day one. It must be a web service. So we'll talk about what web service is on Tuesday, but you will have a server. You will have a friend web page. Uh, you can have a mobile component if that mobile component talks to the backend. But but the core part of the project should be a web service. Okay, thank you. Yeah, yeah. So we we have seen students making that, but again, that is just a friend end for the mobile uh, like a backend service. The reason to require this one is because uh, you can try all the different approaches and tools with web services. If we want to do an app, it's too easy. Um, and you won't have the opportunity to apply those kinds of things. Okay, got it. Thank you. No problem.